In this video, we are reacting to yet another Hey Bricky video all about Disney versus Universal. Epic Universe is poised to make its grand opening pretty, pretty soon, actually, in less than a year. Can Disney outmaneuver Universal? That's the topic for today's Bricky video. That's the video we are reacting to. I got the Italiano with me today on this episode of OG55. Welcome aboard, everybody, to another episode of OG55. I have the Italiano with me today. We're talking about Disney versus Universal, Epic Universe on the horizon. Can Disney outmaneuver Universal with this? We will see. We're going to talk about it. We're going to react to this video from Hey Bricky. But George, the Italiano, welcome back, sir. Always glad to be back and uh, always a good time uh, having these discussions with you, talking Park, studio, corporate, you know, all that good jazz, and especially doing these kind of uh, reaction videos to our uh, other uh, fellow YouTubers and, and great friend, uh, uh, Hey Bricky. Uh, it's always a good time. Absolutely. If you go to everybody at home, know where they can find you on social media, sir. Absolutely. You can find me on X, formerly known as Twitter, at Disney George. You could also find me on Instagram and threads under the Disney Italiano. Mm -hmm. And, of course, you can find me right here on my home base at Orange Grove 55 with Citrus Corner with all that sweet, juicy, but sometimes sticky Disney news and info. Sticky, icky. All right, this is the one, the only, Mr. Vibes Overrides. Hey, Bricky, make sure you subscribe to Hey, Bricky on YouTube and do as OG did right here and smash that like button. Smashy, smashy like Hulk. And, uh, yeah, are you ready, George? Can Disney outplay Epic Universe? Disney's bold plan revealed. I'm going to play it like we always do here on the channel. George, if there's anything you want me to stop it for, let me know. Just holler at me, and I will do so, and we'll talk about it. Let's here it. we go. In 2025, just next year, Orlando will experience the opening of Epic Universe, the first new major theme park in over two decades. So how is Disney planning on responding to such a monumental addition to the Orlando theme park ecosystem? Will Disney go all out and build an entirely new theme park to compete? Or is there a much smarter play? Because a lot of fans were predicting that Disney would have to create a fifth theme park to combat Epic Universe showing up. But I think there's something here that Disney knows that most Orlando theme park fans don't. Oh, that's interesting. Interesting. Now, I haven't seen this video yet. I'm going in. I'm going in blind. I'm going in. I'm uh. I'm raw dogging it. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. I haven't seen it. I'm raw dogging it. But this is interesting. The idea from fans that you need a fifth park because Universal is building a third, I think is a little ridiculous. I've always thought that was a little ridiculous. Each resort has different needs. You know, Universal is in market share growth mode. So a third park makes total sense for Universal. Diddy World is a much more mature market. They already have four parks. They got two water parks, va vast resorts. A fifth park, I think, would probably do more damage than good. And I think Bricky is kind of in that same mindset, at least from how he's setting this up. But we'll see. I don't want to speak for him, but we will see. But yeah, a fifth park is not the answer. But I mean, would you kind of concur with that, George? Absolutely. And 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 to, to be quite honest, the, the current four parks at Walt Disney World need a lot of TLC. Right now, they need a lot more added into these parks to have a longer, more uh, um, kind of like have more to go on for for families and guests visiting. Because as much as I love Animal Kingdom, as much as you love Animal Kingdom, I, again, you're just like Bricky vibes over rides kind of thing. You don't need really any rides, but for that typical family. From Maine, yes, I'm going to go with Maine here on this one. But, uh, you, you know, and they have young kids. When they go to a theme park, you know, they want to have rides, family rides, kid rides, uh, thrill rides, you know. But And there's not enough, unfortunately, 
that fills in a full day at the Walt Disney World parks. And you're right, to add a fifth gate on top of that, that's definitely going to um, – almost kind of give like Walt Disney world kind of like a, a claustrophobic kind of feel where it's like, there's so much to do. Like there's so much in the resort, but like very little. So it's like, okay, I got to go over to this park just for these five rides. Then I got to go over here for these four rides. It's, it's redundant. It's, it's spread too thin. Right. And also I've said it so many times, people only have so much time and money to go on vacation. We're getting to a point with Orlando where you can't really do it all. Like people don't have, you know, a, you know, three weeks to take off of work to do Disney and Universal. Eventually, there's just going to be too much for the average person to do in in a normal amount of time. You know, people can't take that much time off, and people don't have endless amounts of money. You know, so it's and interesting. I will, and I will say, Universal is in the right right now for adding a third gate. Oh or yeah. Third, or if you're conning Volcano Bay, a fourth gate, you know, but three theme parks, one water park. And uh, honestly, I feel like Disneyland is in that same uh, category. I think it will be beneficial instead of detrimental for the Disneyland Resort to add a third gate, just like how Universal Orlando is doing. Yeah. Every resort has a different need. And Universal is making the right call, building that building that third gate park or fourth park if you count volcano bay they're doing the right thing they absolutely are they're in market share mode this is what they should be doing mm -hmm. um disneyland could use another park there is growth potential there you know hope you know when you build a third park or an additional park the the main mindset is to um you know to boost hotel occupancy and things like that and disneyland resort right now is probably like maybe like a two-day resort maybe a three-day at the most so you can, there's room to have a third gate to kind of bolster the hotel stays. Uh, right now, Disney World, there's so much to do already. Uh, you know, how much can a, a family reasonably add to that already? It's a lot harder, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, fifth gate is not a good idea. And I don't think they're going to go in that direction. I really don't. But let's see what Bricky has to say. Bricky here, breaking down who's the real winner in the theme park wars. So let's dive into a timeline that I've created and break down how Disney plans on winning the battle for your family's precious vacation days. All right, so first let's break down why Epic Universe is gonna be such a big deal. Epic Universe opening next year in 2025 will be Orlando's seventh premier theme park. And I'm not including water parks and I'm not including other theme parks. I'm just talking about Premier all day parks, Universal 3, Disney 4. Total of seven. That's a week worth of theme parks. And as somebody who is a huge Disney fan, let me be the first to say this about Epic Universe. It looks awesome. It looks state of the art and it feels like it's going to live up to its namesake. It is going to be epic and it is going to give fans the ability to travel to various different universes through the portals. And they've picked some of their fans' favorite. One of the things I love about Epic Universe is, and this is actually credit to our friend Slimer, okay? He brought this up a long time ago, and I think it was an absolute brilliant observation. When you watch a Universal movie, the logo comes on with the giant earth, and it says Universal, right? Da, da, mm -hmm. da, da, right? The whole thing, right? The way Epic Universe is kind of laid out, and I don't know if this is done on purpose or, or like a happy accident, you know? But... The celestial park that we're seeing here, it's very cosmic themed. Mm -hmm. It feels like you're walking into a universal film. And this is the universal logo in theme park in a theme park um, translation, essentially. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. With all the stars, the constellations and all that stuff. It feels like the logo in theme park form. And I think that's really cool. I think it's really, really clever. Very Did neat. Universal mean that to be the case? I don't know. I haven't heard anything like that. I mean, that's that's our friend Slimer's theory. But I think Slimer is onto something with that. I think that's an absolute brilliant way to look at this park. I love it. Stories and brands for them to explore. And when I saw they were doing this, it's like, how to train your dragon? Who cares about that? I suddenly find myself caring about how to train a dragon because the land that I thought was going to be the weakest looks to be one of the most impressive. Like this thing looks amazing from portal to portal. And that is from a hardcore Disney fan. Been to the Disney parks hundreds of times, 
Never been to a Universal Park, but this might change my Disney Gold Star stat. Yeah, he should definitely check out some Universal stuff. I obviously my bias in my heart is with Disney, and it will will always be there. And I and I'm not going to pretend that I'm neutral because I'm not. <laughs> I love Disney more, full stop. You know what I'm saying? But I'm not closed minded. I have a Universal annual pass. I go to Hollywood pretty frequently. You know, I mean, pretty close to as many times as I go to Disney per year. I love going to Universal. It's a great change of pace. They do a lot of great stuff. So yeah, I would encourage our friend Bricky, definitely check it out. Try Hollywood. It's a different kind of park. It's not your traditional theme park. Um, it is laid out kind of differently because it is. it was built around a working movie studio. But I think Bricky would actually really enjoy Hollywood. Oh. Hello? Yes, Bob? Yeah, I know. He just said that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Your status is revoked, bro. Oh, man. I lost my special access. No. <laughs> I'm going to have to plead my case to Dana Walden. Oh, shit. Go ahead, George. What, what are your thoughts, brother? Yeah, no. I, I'm the same way with you. I, I do. I have a very strong Disney bias. It, it's no lie. A lot of people could even tell by the frequent trips that I make out to California, Florida. You know, eventually I want to experience the international parks I go on. Nothing but Disney cruises. I don't use any other, you know, cruise cruise liner. It's like Disney is my thing. It's it's I have a love for it. I have a passion for it. And I do enjoy Universal, but it's never on the same caliber as Disney. But again, I also have an open mind where I like to enjoy and have different new experiences. Uh, we're already even talking about, you know, experiencing Epic Universe for ourselves, you know, when after the fact it, it opens. So it's like you always want to allow yourself to experience something new and different, but you could always come back home, so to speak. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. I'm just waiting for um, Dallin over at Offhand Disney to go first so I can basically win Corvette Law. You know, we're the last person to leave their hand on the car as the one who wins it. Neither one of us have been to a Universal Park, and I'm not going to be the first to go. I want to be the last holdout. So it's going to be amazing, but I'm here to say this. This is what fans, I believe, have gotten wrong. Many people believe if Universal is building a new theme park, then that means Disney has to build a new theme park. But I feel like that assumption couldn't be further away from what Disney needs to do and obviously what it looks like Disney is planning to do. And see, he's right. And we talked about this a little bit just a second ago earlier on in the show. I see the same kind of mentality when it comes to Super Nintendo World, right? Super Nintendo World has been a massive success for Universal in that theme park space, right? It, it, it's helped Universal Hollywood quite a bit. I think it's doing very well in Japan, obviously. But I see a lot of people, a lot of fans say, well, what can Disney do to combat Super Nintendo World? Can they do a Sonic Land or can they do a Kingdom Hearts Land or this, that, and the other? And it's like, I don't think that's the answer, in my opinion. I think that that's too... I, I don't think you need to, to... It's too predictable. Well, yeah. And I think fans are so literal with this stuff. Like, well, if Universal making a video game land, then Disney has to respond with a, a video, game, video game land too. If Universal is building a fifth park, then they obviously have to respond with another park. Well, it's even like with... Um, um, Epic Universe is uh, Universal's monsters, you know, right. Dark Universe. People now assume that, oh, because Disney is now doing a, a Disney villains in Magic Kingdom, oh, that was their beckoning call to Dark Universe, where technically that's not true. Disney villains going into the parks have been in conversation in WDI for many, many, many years. I remember hearing this rumor seriously 20, 25 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, back then it was a park, you know what I'm saying? We heard it was going to be a whole theme park, but yes, you're right, George. I mean, it was the villains thing has been, ki they've been kicking the tires on that idea for, I don't know how long, bro. Mm -hmm. Like since I was in high school. Okay. And that was a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> So you're asking yourself, well, if Disney isn't going to build a theme park, how do they plan on competing with Epic Universe, which is obviously going to be the number one ticket in town for quite some time? So let's break down what I believe Disney's long-term strategy is to stay number one in Orlando. So both Disney and Universal know that the average family only has so many vacation days. Oh. So building another park would 
absolutely mean that they're overcrowding the marketplace. Eight theme parks is definitely one too many for how many vacation days most families have. And if you had eight theme parks, you would 100% be making most American families choose between their favorites. Not Europeans, though. They seem to have unlimited time to go on holiday. And in fact, the way it is right now with Universal putting the seventh park into the ecosystem, many fans are already going to have to pick and choose which theme parks they're going to go to on their vacation. Some parks are just going to get skipped and Universal may be making the park that everybody's going to want to go to the most, but their other two parks, uh, they might be in trouble just like some of Disney's least popular parks. And we've made that argument so many times. And Universal, we, we reported on, on this a few months ago, Universal was telling all these third parties and these travel agencies that they're going to do um, uh, ticketing packages where you're forced into the other two parks for these three-day, I think it was like a three-day deal or three- or four-day deal. You're forced into going to the other two parks if you want to spend any time at Epic Universe, right? I don't know if we've heard any updates on that since. Um, if if we have, please comment in, in the comments down below, my Universal friends. But clearly they are worried, though, with that. I mean, they're, clearly they know there's going to be major cannibalization with these other two parks. And see, this is the thing. Yes, has Universal added stuff, anything, in Universal Studios and Islands of Adventure? Yes, they've had they've added stuff. Yes, we've gotten DreamWorks land recently. Uh, Velocicoaster, um, Hagrid's, but it's been pretty slim. You know what I'm saying? Those parks, especially Islands of Adventure, from what you were telling me, and Slimer, that park needs a lot of work, you guys. A lot of work. Universal isn't stupid. They know the shiny new thing down the down the road is really going to cut into these, into these other parks, and I think they're worried. I think that's why we're seeing the ticket deals being being um, uh, compromised, not compromised, um, sort of crafted the way that they are because they see that come a mile away. And I was saying this years ago and fans were like, oh, oh gee, come on now. It's, all they're going to do is add another day to their vacation. Not necessarily. I've been saying that that's not a foregone conclusion. And clearly Universal seems to think it's not too because of the way that we're seeing all these third party uh, ticket deals and stuff about, about um, kind of bundling the other two parks in. But what say you, George? I know we've talked a lot about that in the past, but what are your thoughts on that, brother? I, I completely agree. And again, especially since being there in the parks, uh, the studios and IOA, especially IOA, um, unfortunately, is uh, basically the whole entire park is completely outdated. It needs a fresh new look to it and what have you. And yes, when you bring in that shiny new kind of toy so to speak i'm going to kind of like reference toy story here it's like when andy first got buzz lightyear he was the brand new toy on the block you know and it's like putting it up against a kind of old beat down raggedy cowboy doll no offense woody but i'm just saying like in comparison it's like you go for that new shiny new thing that's what epic universe is going to do so if these parks if ioa and the studios already look outdated now try putting that next to epic universe once it opens it's going to okay. look even more uh uh decrepit and you know how you know that people have no intention of adding another day to their vacation when epic universe opens you know how they know because when 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 that third party news came out a few months ago where the for the travel agencies that that you would have to go to these other parks in order to even have one day at epic the online community was furious that shows you right there people when this park opens they have no they don't want to go to the other parks it's all about epic mm -hmm. and, and, and and they don't want to tack on another day excuse me they don't want to tack on another day and that's a big problem for Universal. We'll see how it works out. Okay. I think eventually they'll weather the storm, you know, um, a lot, of, you know, it, look, they're not going to go under or nothing like that. I'm not saying they are, but I do think that these other parks are going to take a big hit. And I think Universal really needs to step up their, their, their plans, whatever they have planned for these, for these existing parks and, and get going here. Because I think, I think those other two parks are going to see a major, major, major hit.
Mm -hmm. So this is something that I had been predicting for a while when lots of other folks have been like, oh, no, man, Disney's going to build the fifth gate. I've been saying for a while, I don't think that's going to happen. I think instead of creating a new park, Disney will double down on refreshing the parks they already have, creating new attractions, new experiences to bring guests back. I know that's not rocket science, but uh, the way that this is all rolling out, it's pretty clever and it's pretty sneaky. And I think that you'll see that it's a pretty smart way to combat a brand new theme park that's going to get the entire industry excited. Okay, so let's break down with Epic Universe on the horizon. How is Disney going to keep up? Because 2025 will be here before we know it. It's already Halloween, according to the theme parks, which is ridiculous. All right, so we know that next year, 2025, is going to be a massive year for Universal and Epic Universe. The theme park is obviously going to dominate the headlines and it's going to bring in huge crowds. In fact, I believe it's going to probably bring in more demand than what its supply can actually offer. But we'll get to that in a second. But what I see here is Disney is playing a calculated long game. And I think if their timing lands the way that I'm predicting, they'll, they'll be able to pull it off and they'll be able to be competitive. Although for many fans... For years, it will look like they're losing. But let me tell you something about horse racing. When your horse comes out of the post and it's the very first place horse, you're not going to win the derby. The horse that wins is the horse that pulls into the front as they're on that final straightaway. It's all about pacing yourself and timing. And I believe that is what Disney is doing. So Love let's look at two. It's a perfect analogy. And he's right on that. And, and a lot of fans, that's going to fly over fans heads a lot of people's heads they're gonna just he's right they're gonna see universal's winning look at the two years in a row epic universe is 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 doing bonkers numbers they are they absolutely are but how do these numbers look three four five years down the road how do these numbers look when villains land opens you know what i'm saying it's a long game of course they're gonna they're gonna do amazing numbers in 2025 and probably into 2026 of course but the long game how does it compete against its own parks, number one, and against Disney's when Disney's stuff that they announced at D23 starts to open. And this is why Disney, all the more, I feel is really going to unload on all the uh, information of what was released on at D23 because 2025 is a major year because tomorrow promised, you know, uh, dirt's going to be shoveled. Earth is going to move. We're turbocharging. But also, 2025 is the year Epic Universe opens to the public. Right. So while this will be open to the public, Disney has to kind of offset by being that they don't have nothing to open along kind of alongside with it to kind of make it an even grind. They have to make official announcements on the stuff that they had promised us at D23 to say, hey, construction starts a couple months on this date. Uh, here is the name of the, these attractions. Here's the name of these new lands. Um, here's where Avatar's going. Here's where Coco's going. Here's where Monsters, Inc. is going. Uh, we got official um, clearance from the, uh, the water management district. We're good to go with Cars Land and Villains Land. They need to make those announcements, even though it may seem irrelevant or insignificant. It plays a major impact part on Disney's behalf in 2025 when Epic Universe gets ready to open. Yeah, with the diehard fans psychologically, absolutely. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. 2025. Epic Universe is going to open to massive demand. But Disney has a little something they're going to be planning on doing because some new projects will start in 2025. But not all of them, because in the first year, a couple of things are going to happen to Epic Universe that fans, I don't think, are thinking about. There will be more people that will want to go than the park can accommodate. So therefore, it's going to be the hottest ticket in town, which means everybody won't get a ticket. And the people that won't get a ticket will do two things. They'll either go to a Disney park instead, or they'll just stay home and be like, we'll go next year when the hype dies down. Either way, 2025 is going to be a soft year for Disney, but it won't be as soft as the next year. So inside of 2025, when everybody's running over to Epic Universe or people are hoping to run over to Epic Universe, Disney will quietly begin construction on a Monsters, Inc. land inside of Disney's Hollywood Studios. 
arguably, in my opinion, one of their worst theme parks. This will be the first ever fully designed and articulated Monsters Inc. land inside of a Disney park. It will also have Disney's first ever suspended roller coaster. So we're going to use Star Wars Galaxy's Edge as our timeline because it took them way too long to build Tron, took them a long time to build Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind, took them a pretty decent amount of time to build Avengers Hallway here at DCA. But all of those projects were tainted with 2020 and all the stoppages when disney is going full speed star wars galaxy's edge took about four years so we're going to use that as sort of our standard on what we can guess some of these other projects will take and that puts me guessing that this monsters inc project will be about a two-year project maybe two and a half and also inside of 2025 disney is hoping to start their progress on converting Rivers of America inside of Frontierland at Magic Kingdom into a Cars Land. And I'm assuming that one will be more around a three-year build-out. So that's what 2025 is looking at. You've got the new park with high demand. Everybody can't get there. So some of those people will go to other theme parks. And we're going to see major projects starting at Hollywood Studios and over at Magic Kingdom. Let's go to 2026. And with all these new attractions and all these new developments, I'll tell you one thing that's going to be for certain. There's going to be so many more new vibes coming to the Disney parks. And oh, what a beautiful way to celebrate the vibes with wearing your beautiful Bricky blouse. Head over to my website, Hey Bricky, link below. Grab yourself a beautiful Bricky blouse or our Walt 1901 hoodie. You will look stylish and everybody will know this person, they're in it for the right reasons. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. And thank you so much for supporting me with the ability to create three high quality videos each and every week. I appreciate your support. Now, this is the year where Disney is going to fully fill Epic Universe. Because in 2026, they would have ironed out all the kinks. The sort of demand thing will have settled in. And all the people that go, we'll wait for the hype to die off, will finally show up. In 2026, Epic Universe will just be crushing. And conveniently, Disney will find themselves in the middle of some of their projects. So in the year where I believe Epic Universe will probably hurt Disney the most, three of their parks will be inside of transitional stages. Because also in 2026, I believe that's when Disney is going to start making the tropical Americas show up at Animal Kingdom. So they can even make the argument like at these earnings calls. And he might be going in this direction. I might be jumping the gun here. But he, because they're kind of they're, they're doing these projects right when Epic Universe is going to be at its peak, mm -hmm. they can go back to the earnings call and say, yeah, the only reason we're slow is because we got multiple projects across the resort. They're kind of burying the lead, as they say, or sort of like covering up the fact that Epic is really maybe the reason. But like by inserting these construction projects in that in that time, it kind of makes it look like, oh, it's, well, it's the construction. It's, it's not universal. It's the construction. That's why we're slow. Exactly. It, that is kind of clever. I don't know if that's the mindset Ricky's going with, but we'll see. I don't know. Featuring Encanto, Indiana Jones a whole new reimagining of Dino Land. I have a video about it. You can check it out. And I believe, once again, this is probably looking at around a two-year transition. One of these is just a overlay update converting Dinosaur over to Indiana Jones. And then, yes, the Akanto, that's going to be a bit of a build-out. But Disney knows what the stakes are. And when they put their might behind their construction, they can make things move faster than they have in these last couple of years when they've just been doing the slow roll and catching up from the lost year. So now we come to 2027. At this point, this is where it gets interesting. Epic Universe will have been open for two years. All the early adapters have been there several times. Families that wanted to go came in 2026. Around 2027, the demand will fall off a little bit or people that are going to Orlando will have already been there making 2027 the perfect moment for the Monsters Inc. land to open up over at Hollywood Studios. This will take one of the weaker Disney theme parks 
put it back in the spotlight. So if families do come to Orlando and they do want to go to Epic Universe, they're still going to probably add on a day to go experience Disney's first ever suspended roller coaster and see this brand new land. And that's all timed with right around when the over over demand of Epic Universe is starting to release. And this is where I think you'll start to see the pattern that I'm predicting for Disney. Because in 2028, when Epic Universe celebrates its third anniversary once again disney will have another rollout to offer because if that's around the time that the tropical americas opened up at animal kingdom you have demand for epic universe cooling off a little bit but now you have two disney theme parks two of the weaker theme parks if i'm being honest that now have significant updates so if you go out there for five days you're like well look we always do magic kingdom because that's the classic we should do Animal Kingdom, we should do Hollywood Studios, and we'll also do a day at Epic Universe. So in this scenario, the big loser is Epcot and Universal's other two theme parks. But the thing that Epcot has going for it is it has its seasonal festivals that people really enjoy. So maybe Epcot is quietly a contender because people do love walking around and eating food on top of trash cans. <laughs> yeah, and here's the thing too, is Epic Universe is gonna be packed when it opens and it's gonna be packed into 2026. I, I think everyone can kind of agree on that, right? right? But I was told by a lot of fans that the true measure of success for Universal isn't necessarily a busy Epic Universe, it's can Universal tackle on more days to a universal vacation, right? You've heard that argument, I think, too, before, right? Yeah. That's where I'm not so sure. Park by park, yes. Epic Universe will be very busy 2025, 2026. But I as don't it, see this park adding on for people to want to stay for a whole week at Universal. Right, exactly. So are people going to do that? I mean, and this is the thing. We're hearing that Universal might be forcing them into the other two parks through these ticket packages who knows if that's going to happen or not at the end of the day but if you're forcing people into that stuff and the, and people don't want to do those other two parks well then people just won't do it at all then i think you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. but let's just say they don't do that and you can buy a ticket for epic universe a la carte if if people go to epic universe and pack it in and i'm sure they will but they don't attend the other two parks or they're not staying they're not maintaining it and adding a day. Is Epic Universe really a success? Because I think Universal's mindset is that we want to become more of a mainstay resort, like, you know, really nick into that Disney World vacation. Well, if people are just going to Epic Universe and bouncing, even if Epic Universe is busy, is Epic Universe a success overall to the resort? That's the big question mark. And I'm not so certain, even in 2026, if they're going to be able to do that. I think there is a lot of problems with those two existing universal parks they've kind of let them slide a little bit too much there hasn't been that much in, that much investment i get it there are examples of some investment velocicoaster hagrid's i get that but not enough to offset epic universe and i don't think they're going to get and this is just my opinion and i could be wrong and if i'm wrong totally cool i think they're going to have problems adding that extra day to their vacation packages um with universe i i really do i could be wrong though we'll see how it all shakes out what say you george I yeah, I completely agree. And when a lot of people were saying, you know, oh, I can see like people now staying, you know, for a week long at Universal. I I don't I don't see it. I don't, especially because as you had mentioned with these ticket packages, you would have to purchase a minimum. I think it was either three or four. It was either a three day ticket or a four day ticket. I can't remember it. That as a minimum, just to get one day one day at epic universe so right. don't tell me that people are going to extend their stay to a whole week to do Uni universal studios or islands of adventure they're going to want to do epic universe again but how do you do that oh you got to buy another whole set of tickets to get another whole day at epic universe right so, so they're cut so there's makes it, what 10 days who's going to well, spend 10 days at universal I know, I know. And that's the either fall on, Universal falls on one side of the trap or the other, because if they do what you're saying, if they do what the travel agencies and the third parties are saying that they were planning on doing and force people into bundling, a lot of people will opt out because a lot of people don't want all three parks. But if you sell the Universal a la carte, 
then you completely cannibalize the other two parks because no one cares about the other two right now. So yeah. this isn't exactly the home run auto, the auto home run that people think it is for Universal. A lot of fans are kind of like thinking like this is this is going to be an automatic win for them. I think it's a little more nuanced than that. As a park, an individual park, I agree with Bricky a thousand percent. It's going to be packed. The demand for Epic Universe is sky high, but it's not necessarily going to tack on an extra day for a Universal right. vacation. And I think Universal had the mindset of saying, okay, how can we control guest flow? How can we control the operations? Oh, let's kind of wean it down where we entice people to go to the other parks so that way we can maintain how many people actually enter in through Epic Universe. By, by them doing that, it made them not even realize, hey – Nobody wants to go to the other theme parks when Epic Universe opens. They're doing that right now. Right now, as we speak, there are people going through the turnstiles in Universal Studios and Islands of Adventure right now. When Epic Universe opens, those same people don't want to go back to those other parks. Again, they want the shiny new theme park that, that they haven't added in the Orlando area in two decades. Right. Or, exactly. Oh, no, excuse me. Over two decades. Excuse me. Um, but the other thing is too that because um, since Bricky was kind of going through the timeline, there's something else that is also significant in 2028. Because by that time, based off of the timeline, it would look like that Tropical Americas at Animal Kingdom would be opened. Um, cause I believe that they said they were slating for like a 2027, uh, completion monsters, uh, Inc at Hollywood studios, chances are pretty much would be done. Um, cars land and villains land would be close to being on the verge of completion at magic kingdom. But there's one more thing. It's not necessarily a land. It's not necessarily an attraction. But it's a major milestone that Disney has under their belt that? that they can optimize to get people in there if they do it correctly. 2028, it's a certain mouse's 100th birthday. Yes, that's why I thought you were going with it. Yes, exactly. And they're going to celebrate it because they went balls to the wall when it came to Mickey's 90th a few years mm -hmm. ago. 2028 you're right they can do a whole company-wide celebration in the parks the whole thing great observation italiana and then i believe what is a very smart move 2029 four years into epic universe it has had its moment in the sun when it was over demand it had a moment when everybody showed up and now it has settled in and a great way to celebrate that settling in is to go to a brand new fully immersive cars land inside of the magic kingdom, as well as the offerings they had the summer of 28 and 27, meaning that for three years in a row, Disney should have a big offering and the offering seemed to get bigger as Epic universe gets a little bit older. Now, will this momentum be enough to win people back to the mouse after they've had a taste of Epic Universe. This is where I think it gets even more fascinating. Make sure you subscribe to Hey Bricky. That is the easiest way for you to help me keep showing up and making three quality videos for you each and every week. I appreciate you subscribing to Hey Bricky. I, I love how he, how he has the cats in the background. That's amazing. Absolutely amazing. See, when you don't subscribe to Hey Bricky, you know, it's those. It's, you're you're not, you're not subscribing to those little kittens. You, you have to subscribe to Hey Bricky. Do it for the kittens, y'all. Do it yeah. for the kittens. <laughs> Cause four years into Epic Universe, Epic will be thinking it is now time for us to do something new. It'll be time for us to add on an extension pad or put a new attraction in, because after a four-year cycle, we now know that we've got to lure families back to Epic Universe. And somewhere around here, the villain's land that Disney has announced that has fans very excited, that is probably on their calendar to compete with whatever Epic Universe does next. So that one isn't on their radar yet because they don't exactly know what defense.
Okay, I do agree with Bricky, but I'm going to alter that a little bit. I don't necessarily think in 2029 that they'll be doing something for Epic. I still think that that would still be kind of new for them to do something major. I feel like whatever is going to go toe-to-toe with villains at Magic Kingdom is what the updated new offerings that they're going to have to do at the studios and at IOA. I would, I'm a, I'm a, I, yeah, I would agree with you, George. Yeah, I think, I think whatever they're, they're going to have, Universal is going to have to green light and fast track. Whatever they want to do for the existing parks, they're going to have to do that really quick when Epic opens. Because I'm telling you, the cannibalization is going to cut deep. And Universal knows it. We're seeing signs of it. They know, they're aware. So, yeah, I agree with you that I think that the attractions, whatever it is that we heard Zelda maybe coming to, one of these parks, I think it was uh, Studio Park, I'm not mistaken. Uh, Zelda is supposed to be going into um, the Lost Continent at IOA. Gotcha. And then there's talks that Pokemon may be going into uh, the studios replacing the Simpsons. Now, Pokemon's a big deal, dude. Like, Pokemon could... That could that that yeah. could be high competition. If that opens in 2029, that, that's high competition for Disney, absolutely, you know? I mean, that's a massive franchise, but yeah, we'll I see. I think if anything that would be best to go toe-to-toe with Pokemon would be the villains. I don't think anything else would stand, 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 ugh, excuse me, stand the chance. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. Pokemon's huge. It's that particular construction project is combating with their theme. Plus with Pokemon, you get a lot of tourism from like places like, you know, Japan, places like that. You're going to get Buko numbers, absolutely tourism dollars. Park rival universal so disney is playing a long con they're going to just go ahead and yield and give epic universe the space that it needs when that's all anybody will care about but quietly they will start laying the breadcrumb trail to bring people back to their parks in 27 28 and 29 and with villains land beyond so instead of going head to head Park versus park, knowing that eight parks is eight days too many, and the real loser there would be the weaker theme parks. They're making their weaker parks stronger, making strategic moves, and kind of doing it in a moment when they go, we're not going to be able to win for these three years, but we can set ourselves up to win for the next 10 years. And if I know anything about social media and where culture's at these days, I believe that all of this is paced out appropriately for when that shininess of new starts to wear off. And then people are like, oh, I want to go do the new thing. As for what's going to come next, who knows? But it sounds like we're all in for one hell of a ride. And that ride will be maybe in one of your favorite parks. (laughs) Friends, if you want to see my breakdown on the concept art of Villains Land, this is unlike any YouTube video you've ever seen. I poured through And for one hell of a vibe... Make sure you make sure you subscribe to Hey Bricky, friend of the channel. Another fantastic video. I want to thank Bricky for the amazing content that he does. George, any final comments before we skedaddle? I I definitely agree with Bricky on his breakdown of like the the timeline between uh, 2025 to 2029. I think it's pretty solid. It's pretty accurate, and I could see the same that like the, the pace of those. Um, occurrences happening with both Disney and Universal kind of intertwining um, throughout that timeline. Um, but as I said, the only the only thing that I would change just a little bit is by 2029, I don't think Universal is going to be aiming to add more to Epic Universe just yet. Right. I think they're going to lean more towards the other two parks because they're going to have to. They have to, bro. They have to, like, literally, when this park opens, really, they should start now, to be quite honest with you. They should start now. Yeah. But um, but really, once Epic Universe opens, they got to they gotta turn their attention immediately to the studio and to IOA. And from what you and Slimer are telling me, from the, 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 the shape that IOA is in... It's not good. It's not pretty. They got to address it. They have to address it. You know what I'm saying? And I wouldn't be surprised if we hear some movement on that Marvel-Disney deal. Universal is going to want to invest in IOA to pull people away from, well, not pull people away from Epic, but to kind of offset the cannibalization. And Universal might be looking at, at Marvel going, hey, I, all we can do is repaint this thing. We can't add anything to this land. I mean, why don't we go ahead and put a franchise in here that we can actually expand and grow with? That's what I would do if I was if I was Universal. I get it. Spider-Man's an enormously popular attraction, but it's not like Universal 
can't it's not like universal isn't a hit maker universal ha- makes hit hit rides constantly and, and they're, they're gonna have half a dozen hit rides over at epic universe clearly they can come up with something that would be equally as dope as spider-man in that spot and i will say i do enjoy spider-man i really do however this last time it was a bit lackluster than from the time before i actually enjoy transformers a little better than spider-man to be honest with you and with the incredible hulk coaster it's just a coaster. You can keep the exact same track, sex, exact same layout, but just retheme it to something different. Doctor Doom's Fearfall, to me, that was like the Maliboomer. It's kind of like just people. People get mad at me when I say this, but like this is the one thing that like Six Flags does. They'll paint a coaster black and yellow and call it the Batman ride. Yeah, uh, you know what I'm saying. That's to me. That's not theming. I I don't know. I you know, for me personally. And, and I, that's a little bit of the problem that you have with the Incredible Coaster. It's a it's yeah. a great coaster, but but to say that it's Incredibles themed, no, it's Incredibles decorated. It's Incredibles decorated, exactly. Exactly. The only slight difference with the Incredible Coaster is that the the coaster itself is almost part of a theme for a pier, if that makes sense. Yeah, it's so, basically it was a weird. roller coaster that they were having like a ceremony, kind of like dedicating the roller coaster to the Incredibles. So, weird, really weird, really, really, really strange. But yeah, that's why I'm not a huge Pixar pure guy. I'm not. They, but they I need do a, think. But, oh, guys, sorry, bro. Well, I'm just saying I've been through it so many times in other videos. But I, yeah, they need to readdress the Pixar pure stuff. But go ahead. But I do think I agree with you. I feel like that is a perfect opportunity for both Universal Comcast and Disney to have a nice, long sit-down conversation, chit-chat, if you will, yes. And uh, and then I think, honestly, after they strike that deal, because I think eventually it's going to have to, it, it, it'll benefit both parties in the long <clears throat> run. I think Universal should look towards of uh, maybe even changing uh, uh, univer- uh, the... the uh, uh, Marvel Superhero Island to like DC Comics. Yeah, they can work something out, dude. Universal is a very capable company. It's in good hands right now. They have great management. They do. They have good. They have a strong management team um, over there, and they, they'll figure something out. But I think it's it's a dead end land. Marvel, um, you can't go anywhere with it. You know, Universal has a lot of great relationships with like you know um, with J.K. Rowling with Nintendo. They have properties they can they can kind of pull from that they can actually do stuff and add to. Mm-hmm. Why are you going to sit there and, and have Marvel in there just stagnating? So you can just repaint it and that's all you can do to it? Come on. You only have so much space. I mean, you know, so we'll see. But uh, the Italiano, if you can remind everybody where they can find you on social media, sir. Absolutely. You can find me on X, formerly known as Twitter, at Disney George. You could also find me on Instagram and threads under the Disney Italiano and, of course, you can find me right here on my home base at Orange Grove 55 with Citrus Corner with all that sweet, juicy, but sometimes sticky Disney news and info. Or, in this case, Bricky news and info. There it is. Everybody, thank you so much for watching this episode of OG55. Comment down below with all your thoughts on everything we talked about today. Disney versus Universal. What are your thoughts on this? What were your thoughts on the Bricky video, the timeline, the whole the whole shebang. We would love to hear from you. And we're going to end this video like we always end this video with the queen. Thank you for watching OG55. If you aren't already, consider becoming a member today.